Welcome to Advanced Poker Training. In this video, I'm going to be going over our cash game simulators. We have a 9-player No Limit Hold'em simulator shown here, a 6-player simulator shown here, and the options on both of these are going to be identical, so I'll cover them together, and then briefly at the end of this video, I'll be going over our Heads Up simulator as well. And the first thing I want to point out is that many of these options that you'll see in this video will be disabled until you get your All Access Pass. And you can do that right up here at the top of the screen to unlock all the great features we have. And I highly recommend you do that, and I appreciate your support of our community. So the first option you're going to see at the top of the screen is probably the most important of all. You can select between our human-like virtual opponents. These bots play very much like the real opponents that you'll face at your local card room or at a home game or online. Then over here we have our GTO style opponents. These play a more mathematical strategy and they give you advice much like you would get out of a solver. In fact, there's a whole other video, I'll circle it here, that shows you how to get the most out of the GTO style opponents if you choose to play against those. But for now I'm going to stick with the human-like opponents and you can see that you can select your table and your skill level here. And you can select the blinds over here. You can play at whatever blinds you feel comfortable playing at. Note that this does not affect the skill level of your opponents. Only the table selected over here determines the skill level. And over here you can enter how many chips you want to bring to the table. You're limited to starting with a maximum of 150 big blinds. And down here you can enter how many chips you want your opponents to start with, and there's a couple other settings related to things such as how often they reload their stack. Down here there's a bunch of options, mostly for our members. You can change the player mix if you'd like to play against more aggressive or more passive opponents, maybe to approximate the types of opponents you generally play against at your favorite card room. And here you can pick an advisor who watches over your shoulder and gives you advice as you play. And there's a few more options here. If you select this, for example, your advisor will only pop up when they disagree with your decision. And if you're playing against our human-like bots, there are 28 different advisors to choose from. And you can check this box here, and when you get advice, it will show you a summary of how all 28 advisors would have played the hand you're currently in. I'll check that box now so you can see what it looks like later. If you'd only like to be dealt from a certain position, you can select one here. This is called freezing the button. For example, if you'd only like to be dealt in the big blind every single hand, to practice playing from the big blind, you could select that here. And generally, of course, you're going to want to be dealt completely random hands, but if you'd like to speed the game up and always be dealt a playable hand or always be dealt a raising hand, you could select that here. And there's a bunch of other options in this drop-down. You can even enter a custom list if you'd like to pick exactly which hands you'll be dealt. So, for example, if I wanted to practice with ace-king suited and ace-queen suited, I could enter them here like this. And there's a few more options over here. If you want to avoid the temptation of peeking at your opponent's cards, you can uncheck this box. If you're just messing around and you don't want us to save the hands you're about to play to your database, you can check this box. If you wanted to practice playing as a short stack, for example, you could check this box and just start each hand with the same number of chips. So you'd enter the number of chips you want to start with up here, and then on every single hand we will reset your chip stack to that value. And you can use a four color deck here. And finally, the action timer. Um, if you play online, you probably know that you only have 20 or 30 seconds to act. If you want to simulate that here to put yourself under pressure just like you're playing online, you can set that up here. Okay, so let's click Submit and start the poker game. You'll notice this looks very much like a typical online poker game. You've got your Fold, Call, and Raise buttons down here. There are three ways you can adjust your raise sizing. You can enter a number in this box. You can use the slider here. Or you can use the shortcut buttons if you want to, say, raise half the pot or the size of the pot. Now one thing you'll notice here is that whenever you fold, you immediately get dealt into the next hand. We do this so you can train extra fast, but if you'd prefer to turn this feature off and actually watch each hand play out after you fold, go to the menu up here and turn off the zip to end feature. While I'm up here, let me cover everything else on this menu. 
this chips options button will take you back to the original configuration screen we just came from if you want to change any of your settings or add more chips to your stack. You can turn the sounds on and off. You can speed up or slow down the game. I'll explain peak at end in just a minute here. And down here, generally, you'll want your chip stack to be shown as a dollar amount, but if you prefer to see it as a number of big blinds, you can change that here. A lot of online real money poker sites have started to allow this option, so we added it too. So going back to the game, you can hover over any of your opponents to see some of their statistics. Some of you will be familiar with these statistics as they're similar to the statistics kept in a program like Poker Tracker. If you're not familiar with them, you need to go to our Frequently Asked Questions page to learn more about them. And at all but the hardest level, you can click on your opponent's cards to peek at them. Now obviously that's cheating, but since this is a training simulator, we allow it. A better option if you don't want to cheat is to hold down the fold button when you fold. You'll notice here that if I hold it down for one second or longer, it changes into a button that says fold and peek. So what this will do is show you all of your opponent's cards after you fold. And you can do this with the raise button as well. Say you're making a raise and you want to see your opponent's cards if they fold, hold down the raise button. And as you can see, it becomes raise and peek as shown here. So this isn't cheating per se in the same way peeking at your opponent's cards is because you're only seeing their cards after the hand ends. Now if you always want this feature on, go back to the game menu and you can turn this peek at end feature on and then you'll always see all the cards whenever the hand ends. Up here in the top right corner you can click this icon if you want to go full screen and click this X when you're ready to quit playing and see your session report. If you ever forget to click this X and you just accidentally close out your browser tab, don't worry, all your hands played will still be saved. Finally, there's this row of icons here. This is the advice button. It causes your advisor to pop up. There's also the summary of all 28 advisors down here. If you remember, we selected that option back when we originally configured the game. Now you'll notice a brain button here and also this show range button here on your opponents. I'm not going to cover these at all in this video because there's a whole series of videos just dedicated to the brain button and the show range button. I'll show you where those are here on the instructional videos page. This here is the odds button. It will give you various odds depending on the situation you're currently in. If you want to retry the hand you just finished, press this button. It will take you back to the previous hand so you can try it again and try out a different strategy. Note, as it says here, when you retry a hand, your second or third or fourth try will not be saved to your database, so you don't have to worry about it messing up your statistics. And finally, this is the Tag Previous Hand button. When you're finished playing a hand, if you want to mark it in your database so you can find it easily later on, you can give it a tag here, which is a category you just make up, and you can make a note on it as well. Here I'll put this in a category called For Review. And I'll make a note that says, should I have raised? Now watch as I go over to my My Saved Hands database, and you can see the tag and the note I made on this hand that will remind me to review it later. Last but not least, I did say I would quickly go over our Heads Up simulator in this video. You can start a Heads Up match here. First, you'll have to select from our Heads Up Cash Game simulator, or a Heads Up Sit and Go, which is a two-person winner-takes-all tournament. Then you select the opponent you want to play against. We have over 100 opponents to choose from with various skill levels, including our site pros. And everything else should be mostly the same. The only thing I'll remind you of is if you've never played Heads Up before, be aware that the blinds are reversed. I don't know who decided that, but that's the rule. So the small blind is actually on the dealer button, and the dealer has to act first before the flop, but then acts last after the flop. Okay, that's about it. Once again, make sure you get your all access pass so you have access to all these great features. Thanks for watching, and now start training and get ready to ignite your game.